Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone this morning. Let's uh, stand up together, and we're going to worship the Lord. That's what we are here for. Um, so let's pray together. Let's see if you can stand up. Let's do. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for those joining online right now or later. <laughs> let's pray together. Lord, we thank you today, God. We are here to hear the great things that you have for us today, God. This song says, we come to worship our King. We worship you and adore you, God, in this place. I pray that our most important agenda today, God, would be to worship our King and to come and bow at His feet, at your feet, Jesus. I just pray right now, God, that as we are praying, God, that you would bring a fresh revelation of your love fresh revelation of what it means to worship the King of glory, to worship the King of all kings, God, the one that deserves the glory and the honor and the praise forever and ever. Amen, Lord.
105, 3 through 5 says, Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderf- wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. And just as we're seeing great things, this is what we're reminding ourselves. Um, sometimes it's hard for us to, to praise God when we're not experiencing great things right now. And that's why we remember. And that's why we sing. And that's why we remind ourselves of the goodness of God and what he's done for us in the past and what he's done for his people. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your great works, Lord God. Lord, whether some of us are experiencing hardships right now or or great things, Lord God, Lord, we say you are the God of all time, Lord. And we thank you that you work all things out for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purposes your chosen ones. You always have good in mind for them, for their faith, for their families, Lord God. You do desire to prosper us, Lord. You do desire to give us peace, Lord. That is the heart of a good and loving God. But even in the midst of our trials, Lord, we remind ourselves, Lord, that you do great things, that you always rescue, that you always see us and save us and are with us in the fire. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that if the rescue isn't now, that it will come, Lord, because you are the God that saves, that you are the rescuer, Father, and we just seek your presence, Lord. We seek your face today, Lord, and we just remind ourselves of your wondrous works, Lord, that you've done before us in past generations and what you've done in our lifetime, and we just give you thanks today, Lord. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Call me your 
the grave. He took on the grave. So not even death can shake us. The victor, the victor has won. In heaven has gone. And you're taking us higher. Now you're taking us. Now you're taking us.
in the Old Testament when the Lord established his tabernacle, one of his holy elements was the incense. Uh, I, when I was young, we used to burn incense, uh, maybe for good things, maybe for bad, I don't know, but it smelled very good. Maybe some of you still have incense. Y'all know what that is, don't you? You burn it and it it smells good. It smells beautiful. Maybe like uh, perfume or cologne, right? It's a, it's a beautiful smell. And it points to the praises and the prayers of God's people. What we're doing right now provides a sweet, beautiful smell to the Lord. Amen. And let's just turn that into a prayer, Lord, because it's more incense for, for him for his glory. Lord, thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We glorify you you and your name and your holiness. We glorify all of that. And we lift you up. And we pray. You said, Lord, that the prayers and the praise of your people is like sweet smelling aroma. Lord, I'm, re- I'm reminded of when Noah got off the ark and his sacrifice, it says, was a beautiful aroma to you. And we, we worship you here this morning and our lives, may, may our lives be that, 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 sacrificial aroma to you. And we we pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We have some special things this morning during our announcement time. First of all, we welcome everyone to Church of Living Hope. We just pray that you're really being blessed in the presence of the Lord. Uh, If it's your first time, you should have gotten a card. If you'll please fill that out, I would love to meet you after service. So please bring that to me in the front entryway is where I would like to meet you. Um, We have several announcements and just some some little testimony time and some prayer time. So all of us get to stand up here for a minute. Hallelujah. (laughs) So, first of all, maybe some of y'all have heard that we have a church app now for your phone that helps with communication. Yes. We are prayerfully trying to increase and help. And all the announcements are on there all the time. So if we speak it from the front, it's on there. Isn't that good? And we're getting the calendar going. Of course, we're just we're trying to get those wheels turning perfectly, and they're turning, and and it's growing. So this should be a screen. Yes, here. Um, get it. Get signed up. And again, you say, "Wait, what did Pastor say?" It's on there. So. That's super helpful. So I, I don't want to belabor that anymore. Um, and just give the announcements. First of all, I want to continue to announce the wonderful women's Bible study that is happening on Monday nights. Yes, I'm hearing powerful things about it. Powerful, powerful, powerful. And so any Monday for the ladies here, for for the Word of God, and and for fellowship, growing together. And I know that we need that. So, see Kimberly Fenton for details. If you need any more details, of course, it's held right here. Held right here at the church, every Monday at 6.30. 
And of course, that's in conjunction with our Monday work night. So thank you to all the men. Thank you, Robert, for continuing to lead that. So grateful. Yeah, come on. Well, thank you all for everybody who participates in that because it is a great group effort. And if you haven't had a chance, uh, this last week we did some painting in the kitchen. So one of our big projects that we would like to upcoming do is the kitchen. If you've been in there before, you're like going, this place needs some help. Well, it does. It needs your help. Amen. So if you get a chance to come on Monday nights, it would be a great blessing. We do want to do like a, a pretty major remodel in there, which is a lot of painting and ceiling work and uh, moving some things around. And so we definitely could use your help uh, on Monday nights at 6 o'clock from about 6 to 8.30. Lord bless you. Thank you, Robert. Next announcement, we have our monthly family day, which is another time for fellowship. And of course, it's for all of us. And we love to eat together where we all bring something to eat and just put it in the kitchen before church. And after church, we get to eat together. We play board games. We just talk. We have fun. We drink more coffee, all that fun stuff. And we call it family day. So it's been wonderful. It's really been wonderful every month. And so that's coming up April the 21st. So April the 21st, which I, be I believe is next Sunday. Mm -hmm. I should know what the date is. That would be super smart. It is next Sunday. And so look forward to that. I am going to ask Grace if you'd like to share... Yes. Um, I know we have this slide. Maybe Kevin and Donald can pop, put, pop that up there. But not next Sunday, but the week after that, so we have two weeks to plan, is our third annual youth mission trip bake auction. Yeah. Woo! Everybody wins in this because you get good desserts and the youth get to raise funds. So the mission trip, um, several of our youth um, are going to be going to the Mescalero New Mexico mission trip, which we have some Calvary students, and some of our church members also going to that. Um, but our youth are going to be raising funds um, in two Sundays from now, so you guys have time to save, time to plan, time to d dream of desserts. And the youth are going to come, and them and their families are going to have desserts. We'll have a table right up here. Right after service, it'll take like 20 minutes. We'll have an auctioneer just auctioning off those items. So we're going to start at a nice, affordable price and hopefully go up so we can raise some funds for those mission trips. Uh, we will be able to take cash, cards, and checks. So you guys be ready for, for that goodness. Thanks. Wonderful. Okay, for a few moments here, minutes, I want a testimony time. And we are going to testify about this powerful men's conference that was happened this weekend. I'm going to come down here, and me and some of my, my bros are going to come up here. I'm going to ask Wayne, first of all, Wayne, thank you for leading this event. And... And again, first, first of all, Wayne did an excellent job administering it and handling administration of the event. But honestly, he's the one that came to me a few months ago and really started the process again. I said, hey, remember Pastor Men's Conference? <laughs> that was so key. I'm going to ask a couple more men to come up. Matthew, why don't you come up? James, why don't you come up? Oh, yeah. So first of all, we're going to testify a little bit about the... Oh, yeah, Brandon, come up here. Just just get on up here. First of all, let me just say something. We testified to each other, and it took an hour. So I wanted all the guys to share, but I kind of had a feeling where that may go. So we're just going to get a couple of few good men to talk about this. Hey, they were all great men that went with us. Let me tell you, they had me in tears at the end of this uh, conference. I think the most powerful time was us sharing at the end of the conference. There was things we heard and things God spoke to us. You know, God started dealing with me a year and a half ago. I love to fish, 
but he said quit fishing, Wayne. It's nothing wrong with fishing, but I want you to quit fishing. There's something fixed to happen in my life, and I need to be there to take care of my wife and not be about myself. But y'all, through this time, I haven't got to preach, but maybe twice in prisons, and in prisons they have to shut me down preaching. But I want to tell y'all, there's a fire burning inside of me. It still got me up at 3 o'clock this morning. When I read the scriptures, it says, John, come to baptize with water, but there's one coming greater than me who's sandal i'm not able to even touch and his name's jesus christ and he's going to baptize you with the holy ghost and fire that's the fire that burns in me and that's the fire jesus wants me to preach and that's the kind of man that he turned me into i was a dope head on meth years ago but he's cleaned me up he wants me to preach his gospel it is a fiery gospel it ain't no washed out cold word of god but whenever men of god come together and i see it in these lives and God melting hearts and having us all in tears is a brotherhood that the gates of hell can't prevail through. And so I'm telling you guys, if y'all don't come, you're missing out. There's a brotherhood that God has put together in this church. And I thank you, Pastor David. Me and Sherry come back to the church five years ago. I love this church. Thank you, Robert, for being a good elder. Thank you, Johnny Layton. Thank you, Philip. I mean, Joseph Filippazzo. There's others I may have missed. Thank you, Joe Falls. But God used you men to keep me strong and help me work through some things in my life. You know, and there ain't nothing going to stop me from preaching the gospel of Jesus anymore, guys. I want to encourage men to follow God. I want to encourage men to stand up. I want to encourage men to make the change for this world, for Jesus Christ. I'm tired of hearing a washed out gospel. I want to feel it alive. I want to hear it alive. I want to preach it into people's lives. That's what God called me to do. When Isaiah said, send me, Put that coal of fire to my lips, Jesus. This is the Jesus I want to talk about, the real one, the one that put the power of God inside of me to speak his word because I'd never get up and speak in front of nobody. I was the one that was too ashamed to even stand up in front of anyone and talk to them. But God, God has put this fire inside of me that I can't stop. He woke me up at 3 o'clock vibrating again. I want to go back to sleep. It's only 3. And he said, no, it's me, Wayne. And I jump in the Word. I jump in prayer. I do speak in tongues. I do pray to my Father. I get in the Word, and I chew on it, and I eat on it. And after a while, he's told me, Wayne, you can preach my gospel now because I wrote it on your heart like a tablet. You can share it with freedom. So guys, dig in the Word. Let God change you. He wants you to stand up and speak for Him. Don't be quiet. He says, go. Amen. All right, so I was emotional the whole weekend, man. The, the Holy Spirit hammered me. The Holy Spirit hammered my heart. He was showing me that me as a man, I've given my role to the enemy too much. I made excuses of why not to do things. And, 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 and you know, the mother of my kids are raising my kids by themselves. And the Lord told me, man, you need to take your role back. And that's what I'm doing here at Calvary Commission. I'm taking my role back. You know, the influence I have here. Us as men, we make too many excuses why we didn't go to the men's conference. You know, the money, I even, it was, I even said, it. I said, man, $200, that's a lot of money. But God, he provided and he hammered me the whole weekend. So those $200 was nothing compared to what we received. I received so much more. I was just, I was crying the whole weekend. I told the men, I even apologized to Dino. I said, man, I'm sorry for not being more of an encouragement. I'm, I'm, I'm too, uh, we beat up each other too much, men. We don't encourage each other to stay strong, to fight in prayer. I shouldn't be fighting against you. I should be fighting with you. There's too many of us that fight against each other. We need to stop that. Stop the excuses. Us men, we need to come together here in this church. We've seen churches where all the men in the church went to the conference. And I was like, I want that to be our church. I want that to be our men. To stand up and be men of prayer. Men of worship. So, guys, just be encouraged. You men, if you have the opportunity, let God hammer your heart. He did it to me. He wrecked me the whole weekend. I was crying right here, and I was like, Lord, I don't know what to share because you didn't did so much, so much spiritual nuggets, man. It was, it was just, it was a rekindling. You know what rekindling means is when your fire goes out, somebody comes and has to start it. Man, there was three, 400 men in the room seeking God, 
People got healed. People got delivered. People got set free. Men received revelation of their lack in their relationship with their wives. Where they're going wrong. Us as men, we need that. Jorge said some. He said that his dad would always show up to him when he did something bad. And he would get mad and say, Dad, why? And his dad told him. His dad was a pastor. He said, don't worry when I show up. Worry when I don't show up. And that morning I read and it said that God had left Saul. And the spirit wrecked me. And I was like, Lord, please don't leave me. Us men have to be there. We have to be like, Lord, don't leave us. Teach us how to lead. Teach us how to follow. Teach us how to receive correction. You know, some of us get prideful. We need to stop all that. Men of God humble themselves. And that's what it was this weekend, man. God humbled me. He broke me. Be ready in season, out of season, right? Uh, you know, it was a blessing. It's a blessing for me just to be here uh, at, at Calvary. I know that God's directed me to be here. Um, I, I sought the Lord. I prayed. I fasted. And this was no uh, easy decision for me. But I said, I, I've done everything my way, and it's gotten me no results that are good. Yes, All destruction and, and devastation with my the loved ones, my family, my children. And so I know for a fact that God has brought me here for a purpose. He has a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And he brings every one of us here. And so when I, I had the opportunity to go to the men's conference, I, I wasn't raised in the church. But I know that there's, there's a purpose and a plan that every one of us is. That's why the church is here is for us to come together in fellowship and to grow and spiritually to be able to network and rely on our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. And that's what he's showing me. He showed me in a, a, that as a members of the body that we can come together like at the men's conference and to sharpen each other yeah. and to grow spiritually. I saw walls being broken. Yeah. I saw chains being broken. Yeah. I saw faith being increased. Yeah. I saw yeah. brothers coming together in unity, yeah. one mind and one accord, because that's when the book of Acts, whenever you, they were praying, and when they were all in one mind and one accord, it's when the spirit moves. Yeah. And that's what the church needs to get to. Yeah. It, it's operated at 100% max capacity, but we can all operate and function like we're supposed to. That's when the spirit of God moves. And when we come together as a church body and we can move and function like we're supposed to, God's there. Yeah. He inhabits our praise. And that's the thing that is so beautiful is I was able to witness that. He opened my spiritual eyes to see and understand the things that he's doing in each and every one of our lives, even those who are in authority over us. And I'm just blessed and honored. You know, faith and trust, they, uh, they have some shirts. It, it, you know, it, it's Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 6. It's, it's real simple. You know, it says, ask not or seek and you shall find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knocking or knocking the door be open. Let me paraphrase. Excuse me. Let me read it. I don't want to mess up the word of God. You know what I mean? Uh, asking it shall be given to you. Seeking you shall find. Knocking it shall be open to you. For every one that asks receives, and he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks it shall be open to you. And you know I come with the expectation of experiencing God and seeing Him move in the people around me, and that was exactly what I saw. And you know that was the thing that I I, I noticed is that when. You come with expectations of God moving. He's going to show up and show out. And he did it, and he's going to always do it. So y'all need to prepare your hearts for what y'all are coming to see. Are y'all coming to see man or woman to give you a word or some spiritual encouragement? Or, I mean, are you actually seeking God and asking him to do something in your life and something special? God bless y'all. Amen. Amen. It's been a long time since I held this microphone right here. <laughs> Feels good. Um, you know... That was like my fourth time, I think, going to that men's conference, and every time is like the first time, and it's just, I didn't go with any expectations, just looking for fellowship, and uh, before I left my house, my wife said, uh, hope they got some marriage classes up there. <laughs> so let me tell you, I took a marriage class, and I got it figured out. <laughs> If you need any advice, you can come to David. I told him the secret. Anyway, uh, no, nah, but for real, like, 
the men's conference is special, man. Like, like for us, for us men, we can just kind of let our guard down and be transparent with one another and just be real. You know what I mean? We're not trying to impress anybody. I mean, unless you're throwing axes and horseshoes and all that, all that manly stuff, you know what I mean? But I mean, I'm like, like for real, we're just there to have a good time, man. And I got to like just share my experience with a lot of you brothers there, man. And it was just so fun. And um, something the Lord showed me was like, uh, you know, the enemy, he can bless you, but it's temporary through like, e through like emotions and feelings. It fades away. But what I saw happen this weekend was eternal blessings with, 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 with joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. I could look across the property and see brothers doing activities, sm smiles on their face. Like, I'm like, thank you, Lord. Like, it's like a ray of light just illuminating blessings. I'm like, thank you, Lord. You know, it was just so fun, man. And, you know, every time I go, it's just like a fresh, uh, fresh experience. You know, so just thank you, Church of Living Hope, for giving us this opportunity to share what happened out there. And it has been, been real fun. I just want to describe a scene, if you can imagine it with me. How many men do you think were there? Did they say 400? And I think someone already described it up here, but just see it in your mind's eye with me. A room of 400 men praising the Lord. It felt like, it felt like the army. You know what I'm saying? It felt military. Yeah. Yeah. It felt military. It felt like, tell you what, what's going on in this room is shaking the world. And yes, and I just, everything they said was wonderful. The only thing I want to add to it is that the Lord is doing something in the men of Church of Living Hope. And be excited, men. Be excited, men, for men's ministry here in this up a year and years, plural. Amen? The Lord is doing something in the men of Church of Living Hope, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you, men, for sharing. Thank you, Wayne. I'm going to ask Pastor Joe if you would come. We have one more special here. Special time. Do you want to go up or do you want to go? Thank you, Pastor. You realize that something's going on here today? Yeah. Something is here. Something is happening that we are witnesses of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Something else is happening simultaneously with what we're doing here. Pastor Gary Tebby is preaching to Church of Living Hope in Wanaco, Peru. Wow. Wow. Right from the office back here. There, the pastor there had to go somewhere else, and he said, uh, Gary, would you preach for me? And so through technology, well, his face is right there on the screen in Wanaku, Peru. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor David asked me to pray for Israel this morning. don't know if you were on communication yesterday when they said there's drones headed for Israel. I heard one of the announcers said that there's no way of turning back because it's a U.S. What do you call it? Uh, UPS setting that once they put that target there, it's going. They can't do anything with it. And they were targeting the places in Israel, Jerusalem, uh, Tel Aviv, and all of these things. 300, I believe, they counted that left Iran to go to destroy Israel. 99% never got there. <clears throat> they were shot down by Israel, by U.S., by England, uh, by France. By, and and it, it just showed that uh, this is God's country and uh, there's a, a protection that is there. I want to pray this morning specifically for the situation there. Lord, I pray for Iran this morning. 
Lord, we know that there's, there's Christians there, there's believers there. We know, God, that this force that's there is evil. It desires to steal, kill, and destroy. And we know that's not your plan. Lord, we pray for Israel today, even as they witnessed that time of, of not knowing when it was going to hit them all through the night. And God, as day broke, it seems like that it has stopped for a while. Lord, I pray that the believers in Israel will be blessed and encouraged and much of the country still does not think the Messiah has come. They're looking for the Messiah or not looking for anything at all. So God, we pray that the veil would be lifted. The veil would be lifted, lifted up. It's been taken away, taken away, taken away so that the light of the gospel can come through. Even as you said, God, so be with our people there. Lord, be with those uh, believers. Be with the missionaries that are there. God, be with the church in Israel. We pray, God, that you would let us wake up and realize that we must, we must pray for them. We must be in alliance with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Joe. Yes, it's something that uh, we don't want to live in fear, for sure, but it's worth s seeing and understanding. The last headline that I read, Iran warned the United States to get out of the way. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> so it's definitely something to keep in prayer. Amen. So that is that. Thank you again, Pastor Joe, for helping us uh, pray for Israel and keeping us inf informed about that situation. If the ushers will uh, prepare for our Sunday morning tithes and offerings, we're going to continue our worship to the Lord. And, of course, we also have online giving. There's a quick shortcut that's inside the church app that's kind of helpful now of course maybe some of you already have figured that out on your phone but that is it's it's helpful it's like a quick way inside the app to get to the online giving and of course we can give with a check or uh, cash uh, here as they uh, pass around the offering plate let's pray lord we worship you thank you lord for a time to give Thank you, Lord, for your uh, generosity, your heart, your, your desire for the kingdom of God uh, to grow, Lord. Your desire to meet the needs of your people, the needs of every person here this morning. I pray, Lord, you bless this offering and, and each person here. In Jesus' name, amen.
you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. I want to preach a probably short series of messages, but begin to really be stirred about our words and the power of words. We've been studying uh, in our weekly Bible study, and uh, we are at the very end of Genesis, and Jacob, or Israel, his new name, is speaking his final words to his sons. And they're, they're very spiritual, prophetic, even predicting the future by the Spirit of God, of course, not on his own account. And it's another testimony about the power of our, of our words. And today, I want to talk about words for life. Words for life. There's power in our words for life. And I hope this encourages us all and helps us to speak words of life. And I just came across this text, and I'm thinking, man, the Lord is speaking this text so strongly this morning. And it is in Ephesians chapter 4. And sometimes I remember this text because it talks about thieves. <laughs> but I, uh, the text ar arguably speaks more about what we say than anything else. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, verses 25 through 32. Verses 25 through 32. It says, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. Hallelujah that it may impact, or I'm sorry, impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Let's pray over this message, Lord. We pray that you would speak. Thank you, Lord, that you remind us what we speak matters, but your word is what we need this morning. You have <clears throat> the words of power. Uh, you have the words of authority. You have uh, the words of life. And so we pray, Lord, that uh, you would speak that to us this morning and help us in our walk in Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. There really are power 
in our words, what we say. And of course, the word teaches that what we say starts in our heart. And let's read in Proverbs 18.21. This is a verse that's been coming up. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And it says, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And it talks about that, the two sides of what we say, right? The two sides of how we say things even. Um, you know, even the attitude of how we speak matters, doesn't it? Um, the tone, so you'd be surprised what the tone does. The tone brings edification or, or discouragement. And that there's this power in our words. It's really an interesting thing that God himself first displays the divine power of his word in Genesis chapter 1, where what does his word do? His word is so powerful, it creates. And that he created this world through his word. And in all of his creation... He created us in the image of God. And truly, the, the reality is, is that only people, only mankind has truly intelligible speech. You know, if someone say, well, birds talk to each other. Well, I guess they're squawking at each other or something. I was talking with somebody the other day, and they said that there's some animal that um, speaks with like, it doesn't, not our speech, but you know what I'm saying, communicates with some kind of subsonic frequency. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. You know? They're like making noises to each other, but we can't even hear it. You know, it's like some kind of something in their throat or something. Let me assure you, animal speech is not super intelligent. <laughs> it's probably like, uh, food, food, food. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. <laughs> owner, owner, owner. <laughs> <laughs> Feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> they have a speech, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty low level. But God invested into his created human people the power of our words. Yes. And the depth and everything that goes with that. And it's a good thing and it's something to grow in Christ. Amen? May, may our speech grow in Christ Jesus. May, may, may our words be led by the Holy Spirit. I was talking with a friend one time because we went to the... It was something about preaching. It was some kind of preaching workshop or something. It was something like that. And I was with another friend who was a, a pastor uh, who preached a lot, part of um, his calling. And the, the man that was teaching was talking about how we need to preach uh, by the Holy Spirit. And preach by the Holy Spirit, preach with the leading of the Holy Spirit, and how our our messages should be 
empowered by the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and which is great. It's all true. And my friend turned to me. He said, our conversations should be anointed by the Holy Spirit. He, 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 said, he said, I need the Spirit to lead me in, in what I'm saying to my friend at Walmart. And how true is that? It's the power of, of our words that we're actually, and we'll get into this throughout the series, so powerful that we'll be held accountable by the Lord for the words or, or their idle words. Um, there's, uh, there's power there. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. There's authority in our words, given by the Lord, of course. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18 is just one text. Oh, my goodness, countless. But it speaks of this authority. It talks about those who believe, the disciples of Jesus and us as the modern-day disciples of Christ. Verse 17 says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Do you believe this morning? I know that I do. In my name, the name of Jesus, of course. In my name, they will cast out demons. Well, that's some powerful words right there. They will speak with new tongues. That's another power of the tongue. Verse 18 they will take up serpents on accident, of course. Let's just clarify that. <laughs> and at the end, we're going to test out this authority. We got rattlesnake box over here. <laughs> that is not biblical, but unfortunately... There's been churches that have done that. It's kind of scary. Kind of scary. It's frightening. It's, it's extremely frightening. <laughs> so it's talking about these, this protection, this authority. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And... I'm sure there's a lot of people that have prayed a lot of silent prayers in their heart, and that's great. But let me tell you, there's been a lot of people that lay hands on people and start to speak. And use their mouth to pray. Uh, there's, there's, authority, there's a godly authority from the Lord in our words that can be there there's there's responsibility of our words and i think i just mentioned this matthew chapter 12 verse 36 through 37 but i say to you that every idle word men may speak they will give account of it in the day of judgment. This is the kind of responsibility of this, this, these, this speech that God gives us. Verse 37, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And there's some, there's, course, this message isn't about eschatology, but just, well, when it's appropriate we speak about these things, there is some sort of end time judgment for believers. And uh, it's something that I believe the Lord uses to help, uh, to help sanctify us in the current age, in our current life. Um... And uh, let me tell you what, when the Lord starts using this kind of language, it's a pretty good motivator. <laughs> it is. 
it's a godly motivator, um, and it's a conviction from the Holy Spirit. And let it let Him convict us, Amen. And let Him convict us in our mouths uh, and the the words. So this morning, we want to talk about the words of life. The words of life. Um, there's even a song right now that's like, speak life, speak life. Have y'all heard that? It's, there's a message there. Um, there's a message there that's what we're talking about this morning. That there are, there is a, it's a responsibility of, of the child of God to bring life-giving words to people. That those words and those messages and those things that bring about fruit and life in the, in the life of someone else. When you look at this text, it's so much about how what we're saying and how we communicate as believers. Again, first thing he said is to put away lying. So the first thing in our points this morning is that we need words of truth. Those are words of life. In fact, the truth is life. <laughs> the Word of God is life. In fact, we just, we, we preached the Word of God on Easter, on Resurrection Sunday, and one of the things that we noted was before Jesus rose from the dead and that we could have access to resurrection power through him, we were dead. We were dead. We haven't been made alive. We were living, but we were walking dead people. And we were made alive through Jesus Christ. And so his word, in fact, the word of God says that Jesus Christ is the word. Hallelujah. It just keeps getting deeper, folks. <laughs> We're just getting down in there. He is life. His word is life. We are not truly alive outside of Christ Jesus. And by his word and by him changing our speech, we can bring life. And we can be people that shine the light of Jesus. And, and so again, I'm trying to stay married to the, to the text here this morning. Lying, he's saying, saying, putting away lying. This is so key. That speaking the truth. Did you know that lying and deception is is the was one of the fundamental characters of the devil? Isn't that crazy? It, it, he's, he's not known as the father of murder or something that horrendous, which he does a lot of that, right? <laughs> or influences people to do that anyway. He's known as the father of what? Lies. It, the first encounter we have with the devil in the Garden of Eden is surrounded by lying. It's uh, that that's the context of the initial deception and the initial sin of Adam and Eve. 
what did the devil say? He said, did God really say that you couldn't do this? And the answer was, yes, he, he did. He said they couldn't do that because he loved them. He loves us. Do you know that God wants to lead you in truth? He, he, he has the highest good for you. He has the highest desire for you to live in truth outside of the myriad of lies. The, this, I almost said mirage of lies, and it is a mirage. It's a, it's a fantasy. There's a fantasy world full of lies, and God says, get out of that fantasy. I saw this sign, and this sign kind of summed it up. It was at a, uh, it was at a outdoorsman thing. Do you have that picture? Can y'all read that? Not the little one. Hallelujah. And it says, and they. They print that. At, they print that at all their stores. In fact, people have gotten offended before. I I was reading on it, and they're like, oh, "I'm so offended." <laughs> Supposed to be a joke, you know, but but it's poignant that there's that fantasy. <laughs> um, that m- must be done away with. Amen. It must be done away with. What else does he say in the text? He says, okay, he says to speak truth. He, he, he covers both quickly. Oh, my goodness. It is 1150. Hallelujah. Okay, we're, we're going. We're putting away lying. Verse 25. We are letting each one of you speak truth. That brings life. It brings life. When you speak the truth, let me just say this and preach. That when we fall into deception and every single one of us has the capability to do it. Every single one of us, all of a sudden we just sl- All of a sudden, somebody asks us a question. We don't like the answer to it. When we confess, that brings life. It brings life. It brings life. It'll set you free. You know, we learn this when we're like four years old. Remember when you lied at four years old? And when you finally told the truth that you felt right. And and no one could teach you how to feel. No one could teach you how to feel at three years old. You're released. Yeah, and I got... And that, that whooping locked it in. It prepared me to keep on speaking the truth. Woo-wee. So there's words of truth we need. There's words of encouragement bring life. Words of encouragement bring life. So he talks about stealing, which is good. Don't steal. It says work with your hands. There's a godliness about that. A godliness about working with your hands and earning um, that, but let's get down to the text. Verse 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers to encourage Edification, that's what, to to edify, 
uh, is that's that root word edification is that process of edifying someone and encouraging them sometimes that can just be um, a kind word like wow Buford you look very handsome today my friend you know just something kind and and those are the easy ones to do right but sometimes we need this in our correction. When I'm correcting my son or my friend. It's so easy to just discourage. It's so easy to... He talks about this corrupt word. It could be a lot of things uh, for the purposes of this specific statement let's just talk about a corrupt word could be just a negative nasty thing you know I can't believe I can't believe you wear a blue shirt <laughs> it's a good looking shirt by the way yeah. mm-hmm Yeah, did someone say kick them while they're down? That's kind of that that thing. But how quickly we can do it if we don't recognize the power of our words. If we don't recognize the power of the words, of the speech, well, you'll, you'll never be such and such Oof. you'll never accomplish this that's corrupt word in fact it's it's bringing corruption to the hearer saying I don't think you'll ever be able to do that oh man What happens when we arrest those thoughts and arrest that mouth and say, you know what? Maybe I am thinking something negative right now. Negative Nancy. I don't hope there's no one named Nancy in here this morning. That negative Nancy in me and I'm arresting that. All right. And I am going to speak life and encouragement, words that build up. Um, many of y'all know I, me and my wife have our children in a homeschool system and a cooperative, which means that you take your children it, different ones could have different schedules. I guess the ones we've always been a part of meet once a week. And it it is a school. <laughs> you know, it's classrooms, classes, children everywhere. Four, four foot, three foot and four foot army. The four foot army. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't done it in the last few weeks but I started feeling very impressed to say you future engineers you future scientists you intellectuals of the next generation and you know I got those kids looking at me like Some of them looking at me, Jesus will like this, looking at me cross-eyed. <laughs> and you know what? I want to be one that uses my words for the purposes of God. For the purposes of God. For encouragement, he says, to edify. And that's needed when we correct people. I believe I said that already. Because we're having to bring some correction 
uh, this is not right, this is incorrect. And before I just start beating someone down, let me build somebody up. Let me build them up. Say, yes, this was incorrect, but I believe in you. I believe that this is getting turned around. I believe that you're the future minister of the word of God. And that we're going places. Let me use my words that way. Amen. That imparts grace to the hearers. We're talking verse 30 talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. Then it gets down here to verse 31. Let's make our last point. We also need words of godliness. Words of godliness uh, bring life to people. A lot could be said here. Let's just read it. The, the word of God says more than I could ever say. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now let's think about that for a moment here as we're, we're, we're closing soon. Let's think about this. There are not just the thoughts, but the intents of the heart that are either leading me towards godliness or away from godliness. This says evil speaking. Evil speaking. Um, there are there are topics, there are there are conversations, there are entertaining things that I'm talking about that are either being led towards Christ or away from Christ. He says here, he talks about these different aspects of these, these, this speaking. And he mentions works of the flesh, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, which is like, could be even like a type of fighting. And he calls it evil speaking. Be put away from you. This, this kind of speaking is inherently sinful. You, you know what we, what we need to be careful of, men and women? We must, we must, if we're talking about our words this morning, amen? We must be careful that we do not use the grace of God in a wrong way. Well, I'm going to talk about such and such because God forgives me. I'm already forgiven. Right? I can talk about this evil stuff. I can talk about this terrible thing. And I'm not watching and recognizing that my words have power and bring and can even influence every single person around me for Christ or for evil. And their words must be godly. Look at what he says next. He starts talking about some godliness. Aren't you, aren't you glad for godly speech? And it's my prayer, and we see it week after week, that when we come to Church of Living Hope, we get to talk about God. 
Amen. There's some godly speech going on around here. We're grateful for that. Let that be in our lives. In fact, I just spoke with a man at the men's conference that you could tell he was a guy that had been hurt. Um, again, no one has any idea who I'm talking about, so I think I can, I think I can uh, say more without uh, it being incorrect. I believe he probably had struggled with homosexuality uh, before in his life. Um, probably a former homosexual. And, and he said, I'm looking for a church where the people are real. Yeah. And he's, in, he's not here. I would have said, come on, come on. my friend. Oh, but he's not even close to here. But what he told me was, he said he, he, said he was highly sensitive to people that would talk a certain way at church. And he, had, he felt like he had to get to know them all over again on Monday. It is. Our speech should be the same all the time. Amen? Words of godliness. And we're grateful for what's going on this morning. But look what he says in the next verse. Look at this godly speech that's going on here. Be kind to one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does he say? Tender hearted. Let that touch our hearts. To be tender hearted. And then if this isn't godly, I don't know what is. Forgiving one another. This that is the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Jesus. Forgiveness. Forgiving one another, and then he says it in black and white just to make sure it's as clear as day. Even as God in Christ forgave you, let what Christ Jesus has done in you transform you again today. Amen? I'm going to ask the worship team to come up, and I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up. I know... We've gone here, but let's have a time to respond. Uh, Anna, thank you. Um, and a time that we can receive prayer. Let us recognize that there's power in what we say. Let us recognize that the Lord is speaking to us about our speech. Let us recognize that what we say is a part of what Jesus Christ is doing in our lives and in our families and in this church and in this world. Will you stand with me today? Do you need a prayer this morning for something that the Lord spoke to you? Perhaps the Lord is speaking to you about the power of your words. Perhaps the Lord is speaking to you about the responsibility of your words. There's things that we've said in the past that we can't change. We can ask for forgiveness and we can repent. But at the same time, there are things that we've said before we can't change in that fundamental sense. But the Lord can give us a new mouth. I want to say something. This We talked about going deep, so let's go down deep. We talk a lot about the gifts of the Holy Spirit here. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of speaking in tongues. And actually, we believe. We believe 
that one of the core truths about that gift is the Lord getting a hold of our mouth. And there is a spiritual work in the mouth (laughs) that there's a connection there. So maybe the Lord is speaking to you about your words and we have can't change everything we've said in the past, but the Lord can help us to be those that speak life going forward from here. If you need prayer for any of those things or need prayer about something in your life, come forward right now to one of these elders and I'm going to pray. Lord, we pray that you're speaking to us about the power of our words and you're speaking to us about the greatest power which is your word you're speaking to us about how you can change us you can change what we say how we say it and you're teaching us that There is a great responsibility in, in, our, in our words. Lord, maybe there's parents here that are parenting, Lord. Speak, speak to them, Lord, about their words to their children, Lord. Lord, there are leaders here, both in the church and in ministry. There's leaders here that uh, have leadership positions in, in their work, at their job. Lord, speak to us this morning about the power of our words. And that we want to use our words to bring life, giving and encouragement and godliness uh, in, our, in the people that we speak to. I pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, that there would be a miracle um, in, in our lives concerning our words. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
be uh, sensitive to the prayer that's still happening. And, um, but we're so thankful uh, for what the Lord's doing this morning in our church and in your lives. And we're going to dismiss and just let prayer continue up here and again if you still want to receive prayer you can come up after we dismiss and the prayer team is going to remain here uh, to help Lord we just thank you Lord that you're helping us to have words and take responsibility even for our words and Lord you're helping us most of all to have our speech transformed by the Holy Spirit by the power of God Thank you, Lord, that we can have that power of life and death in the tongue. We want to see that life. We want to see those words that bring about the grace of God uh, in our hearers. We bless you. Thank you. And pray you'd be with us as we go this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us this morning.